It used to be the case that you had to use pro software if you wanted to edit a raw photograph, but that is definitely no longer true. Everyone can get in on some raw action. That sounded weirder than I'd hoped. And you don't need something like the Adobe Suite to do it. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to edit a raw photograph using a Mac app made for non-pro photographers. Photomator is an affordable app which hides a powerhouse processing engine behind a beautiful, friendly interface. This makes it the ideal app for someone looking to up their post-processing game and begin working with raw files. So grab yourself a coffee, settle down at your Mac, fire up Photomator, and let's walk you through this edit process. Before we get stuck in, it is worth pointing out that you do not need a proper camera to shoot in RAW. Most good smartphones now shoot in RAW too. Shooting RAW means you can get the very best from your photographs because they are digital negatives. When you take photos in JPEG mode, your phone or camera is making all of the post-processing decisions for you and you are more or less stuck with them. Meanwhile, raw photo files let you make the decisions about what to do with the light and color information recorded by your phone or camera in that single photographic frame. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna be editing a raw file taken on my Fujifilm X-T4, but the same processes apply no matter which camera or phone produced your RAW. I should also point out that this video is not sponsored by the Pixelmator team that makes Photomator. I paid for it with my own money and I just think it's a great bit of software. All right, let's begin. Firstly, we only need to use a few of the tools available to us in Photomator. Many of those sliders you can see on the edit screen are quite specialist. Pretty much everything from levels down, we can leave well alone. The sliders are also handily arranged in the order of use, working from top to bottom, from white balance down to color balance. The first step in processing any raw photo is always to get the white balance correct first. This is because we want to create a strong foundation for accurate colors, which will make it easier to avoid ugly color cast and to make better adjustments to things like exposure and contrast. There are a couple of ways to set white balance. I'll show you the automatic way and the manual way. To set white balance automatically, click on the little eyedropper icon. Now all you have to do is click on an area of your photograph that has a neutral color in it. Usually that's a neutral gray, but it doesn't have to be. It can be any neutral color. If you don't have the histogram on screen, enable it now from the view menu and then place it in the most convenient location on your screen. To find a neutral color, keep an eye on the histogram as you move the eyedropper around the photograph and look for shades where the R, G and B numbers are all close to each other. For example, these gray tones on the stacked branches in my photograph or this shade of green in the bushes. Once you set the neutral color, you'll see the temperature and tint sliders adjust accordingly and you've now set the white balance. Okay, that's one option, but you can of course simply set the temperature and tint sliders wherever you think they should be. Cameras can be pretty lousy at getting color temperature right and sometimes makes photographs shot on warm sunny days look like you took them in midwinter. So simply move the slider to the right to warm the color up or to the left to cool it off. Less is more when it comes to the temperature slider and always do a before and after to make sure you haven't pushed it too far. That brings us to the tint slider. Most cameras, including smartphones, use an arrangement of red, green, and blue light sensitive cells called a Bayer filter. Due to the fact that the human eye is more sensitive to green light, there are twice as many of those green cells 
as red and blue ones. This imbalance often means that photographs taken on cameras or smartphones with Bayer filters sometimes have a bit of a tint to them with either a little bit too much green or conversely, too much magenta. So to remove any color cast, either too much green or too much magenta, simply move the slider in the opposite direction. If you use the old eyedropper tool, it will adjust the tint for you when it corrects the color temperature. And since we're using Photomator, you can of course try it up with the machine learning white balance setting by hitting that little ML button. I just think it's better practice to set this yourself. Okay, we've set the color balance for the photo and now have a great starting point from which to adjust the other settings, beginning with everything in the basic block. These sliders are the cornerstone of raw editing and where you'll make the most useful adjustments to your photo. First of all, we have the exposure slider, which you should use in combination with the histogram. For the purposes of adjusting exposure, also set the histogram to luminance mode because we're concerned with light levels now not color. The histogram shows the entire light range from completely dark on the left side to 100% brightness on the right. Typically speaking, a healthy looking histogram will have peaks and troughs broadly located towards the center of the light range. If a shot is underexposed, the bulk of the histogram will be on the left. And if it is overexposed, it will be on the right. So by moving that exposure slider to the left and to the right, while looking at the histogram, you can tweak the image such that it's correctly exposed. It is of course possible to get creative with exposure and deliberately over or under expose your photo to achieve a certain look. At the end of the day, it's your photo. Tweak such that it pleases you. Two of the most powerful sliders in every raw editor are the highlights and shadow sliders. And since these work the same way, we'll talk about them together. The highlights and shadow sliders give you access to hidden photo data that would otherwise be lost if you shot in JPEG. There is information in the highlights and shadows that is waiting to be revealed simply by raising or lowering the these two powerful sliders. For instance, if there's an area of your image where the highlights are blown out, i.e. they're showing 100% brightness, it's entirely possible to recover some or perhaps all of the photo data in that part of the photo by dropping the slider to the left. Ditto, if you have an area where there is full shadow or 100% darkness, raising the shadows will reveal image data in that part of the image that would otherwise remain hidden. You can, of course, use these sliders to deliberately blow out or darken regions of your photograph if you're trying to achieve a certain look. But always bear in mind that it's important to have contrast contrast between light and dark areas in an image, and you may want to keep some of the highlights and shadows raw data hidden for a more interesting photo. The exact names and functions of the sliders in raw editing applications varies from app to app, and you won't, for instance, find something like Photomator's brightness slider in all of them. The brightness slider specifically targets an image's mid-tones. So in terms of the range of light in your photo, its function sits in between the highlights and the shadows. My advice is to treat the brightness slider gently because even small changes can make your image look a lot blander than is necessarily desirable. Nonetheless, the brightness slider is a great way of evoking specific times of the day. To the right, to make it look closer to the middle of the day, and to the left, to make it look more like the start or end of the day. Okay, contrast. Slide this one to the right and it will make your highlights brighter and your shadows darker. Try keeping an eye on the histogram when using this slider and you'll see that moving it to the right stretches the histogram out to the sides, while moving it to the left squishes it together. Contrast is a great way of adding a bit of drama to your image, but try not to undo changes that you've previously made to the highlights and shadows. The black point slider can have a great impact on the feel of your photograph. It works by adding or removing definition to the dark regions of your photograph. If you slide the black point 
all the way to the left. Your image will take on a retro matte look. Dragging it to the right sets a lighter part of the image as the new black point, which in turn makes more of the image darker. Okay, so far all of the sliders have pertained to color and light, but the next two pertain to sharpness and detail. First we have the texture slider, which is great for images with lots of lines and angles, such as cityscapes. The texture slider adds contrast to the image, but rather than acting globally like the main contrast slider, texture mainly affects the edges of objects. As you can see, by moving the slider to the right, Objects such as the branches in my fur graph become much more cleanly defined. Like all of the sliders, the opposite is also true, of course. Move that texture slider to the left and the edges of objects will become much less clearly defined. And then finally, in that basic sliders block, we have the clarity slider, which in many cases can be a bit of a miracle fix for your photos. Clarity enhances both image brightness and color, which in turn makes the whole image look a lot clearer. As you use this slider, you'll find that it's easy to push it too far and turn an interesting and natural looking shot into a muddy mess of over brightened pixels. So use sparingly, nearly always at least half of whatever you put in texture. Now, it's entirely possible to process your photographs using nothing but the sliders in the basic block, but you may find you want to tweak the image further. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to cover all of the sliders in Photomator in this video, but I will run through some of the other options that I commonly use when processing my shots. And let's kick off those extra tweaks with the hue saturation sliders, which pertain, of course, to color. The hue slider is not one I ever really touch because it's more of a novelty effect, completely shifting the entire hue of the image. And of the saturation and vibrance sliders, I definitely favor vibrance. The reason is that the saturation slider affects the global color saturation of every single pixel in your photograph, while the vibrance slider only affects those pixels which are least saturated. Using the saturation slider, you can easily go too far and turn your subtle landscape photograph into some neon looking nightmare that's totally unnatural. However, by applying a little bit to the vibrance slider, it is possible to gently lift saturation in just those parts of the photo that need it. And finally, for this beginner's raw editing guide, let's take a look at the color balance block. This looks complicated, but it really isn't, and it's a great way to add some finishing touches to your photograph. Make sure that you have three-way color selected, and you'll see the three color grading dials that you can see here, one each for highlights, midtones, and shadows. The way these work is that you can add a bit of color to the bright, middle, and dark pixels in your photograph. For instance, in my example photograph, the highlight style is only going to affect the bright parts of my shot, basically the area of golden cloud. I can easily add some warmth to those highlights by dragging the dial up and to the left. Keep an eye on those clouds as I do so. Next, I can go to the shadows dial and drag the slider down and to the right. Shadows are naturally cool in color and dragging the slider into the blues adds to the perception of depth in the image and gives it a more natural appearance. So let's have a look at the photo both before and after. We started with this photo, which is bland and washed out. But with a few simple tweaks, we have found the photo lurking inside the raw and transformed it into this. The image is still natural looking, but we have gently enhanced the pixel information that was always present in the raw file and corrected for my camera's shortcomings in terms of color balance and clarity. As you can see, editing raw photos isn't difficult if you take a methodical approach to it. It also helps to decide how you'd like the photo to look before you begin. Do you want a natural looking image or something more saturated and stylized for your Instagram feed? If you got value from this content, please do hit the old like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more photo, video and drone related content from me. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.